Hello friends, Amy R here with Prairie Paper and Ink with another card and video using one of the exclusive Stamp Timber collaborations. This one with Memory Box. So I started off by cutting some Distress watercolor paper. Right now it's about four inches by eight and a half. And I am using my new to me memory Misty. This is the biggest Misty. This thing is huge. <laughs> you know, it's big. Like the measurements are right listed with the product, but it's still massive. You need at least two square feet, just FYI, to use this. I, I am a mess always on my desk, but I got this because it will make my life a little easier with all the slimline cards I make. So I, this does come with two foam inserts and it says on the one, you use both of them when stamping with clear stamps. So that's what I did. And I also have the grid paper. You get a sample pack of grid paper with it as well. And I like doing that with my misties just so I don't get ink all over the foam because I'll end up getting it everywhere. So I have my watercolor paper in the misty. And then I have these stamps from the Memory Box Limited Edition Collaboration for Stamp Timber. This is the Life's Path stamp set. And there's these two large stamps with all of these trees. And I wanted to make them longer to cover an entire slimline card front. So I lined them up along the bottom portion of this watercolor paper. And I'm stamping them with Versafine Claire Fallen Leaves ink. Just a little detour from usually stamping things in black. I wanted to do brown also because I'm going to do fall colors. So I stamped those two stamps and then I removed that watercolor paper and inserted a piece of Simon's masking paper, which I recently fell back in love with because I had it in a drawer and forgot I had it and started using it again and I love it. So I only needed the top portion. So that's all I stamped on there. And then I quickly trimmed these out with my little detail cutting scissors. And when I'm cutting out masks like this, I cut like pretty much kind of in the middle of the lines when the lines are thicker like this. If they're really, really thin line images, I will cut slightly inside the lines. That way you don't end up with that like ghosting depending on what you're doing the mask. With this, it's not as big of a deal because I'm just stamping the line images. But this way that prevents any of that ghosting and, you know, missing areas right next to the mask. If you cut it just slightly smaller, like just barely, than the actual image. So I cut both my little masks here and I'm applying them to the tops of these stamp trees. And I've cleaned my stamps or just like wiped them off just so I don't get any ink smears anywhere. And then I'm lining up the stamps again, but this time I just flip them around, like using the one I used on the left on the right just to create a little bit of a different um, orientation because they're, these are designed to create this fun path sort of a thing. So I wanted to sort of continue that along the top of this piece of watercolor paper. So with those masks in place, I stamped those trees again with that Fallen Leaves ink and then I removed my masks and now I've got two big long rows of trees. And then I taped this down to a hardboard panel just with some painter's tape and then did some very simple watercoloring using my Prima Woodlands palette. It was all just meant to be. <laughs> I remembered I had this palette and I was like, ooh, that's perfect because these are all the colors I would have used anyway. So I, the entire time I was doing this, like the minute I was looking at the set, it immediately made me think of those photographs you see, you know, in the fall in areas where there's lots of trees and there's all that color. And I just love it. I love it. One, it's my favorite time of year anyway, but also, there's just something about those photos that to me is like super calm and peaceful and I kind of wanted to emulate that with this set. So I went along and just painted everything with these watercolors. I did my background first and I was really messy with it. Didn't worry about it because one, it was a really light kind of beige sort of color. And I went over some of the trees and that didn't matter because I'm going right over it with other colors so that will cover anything up. And after I'd painted my background, I just painted all these trees in all sorts of colors, different shades of green, different shades of reds and browns. I'm going to add some yellow in there, you know, just to get that gorgeous mix of colors that happens just this one time of the year. So I went along and I like, I was mixing colors at random, adding browns to a lot of it just to get different shades like the greens and whatnot. 
And then once I had everything filled in, I'm going to go back and add more to the center here to actually create that path. So just more browns and then decided after I did this that I wanted to darken the area around the trees. So I just went in with a darker shade of what I used originally and painted that in too because I, I really just fall. This card screams fall. <laughs> so painted all that in and then I let everything completely dry before I do an insane amount of splatter, more than I even normally do. I wanted a lot of splatter too. I was also thinking, I was like the splatter to me is kind of like the falling leaves. So I did a ton of splatter. I did some of the lighter shades, which don't really show up on camera, but I did like the lighter beige and the yellow, but then I added green splatter. I added red splatter. I added the kind of burnt orange sort of splatter. And then I'm going to add a whole bunch of brown splatter, like just splatter the whole thing. And then if that wasn't enough, I'm going to add a little bit of white too, because why not? It just kind of pops a little bit with um, all of these colors. So I just kept picking up the colors from the palette with my brush and just tapping my brush all over this to create a ton of splatter. It was just, it was just fun. So once I was happy with the amount of watercolor splatter I had, I pulled out my Amsterdam white liquid and just dabbled a little bit of it onto my hardboard. And then this, I use one of my cheapy brushes to splatter with because this does have like, it's like an acrylic, really thinned out acrylic paint in a sense. So splatter all that, let everything again completely dry. Once it was dry, I peeled off the tape and then I'm going to die cut this with one of the largest of Simon's uh, Slimline Nested Rectangle Wafer Dies. And just barely press that uh, painter shape. Just kind of hold the wafer die in place so that it doesn't shift at all when I run it through my die cut machine. So I did that and then I created my card base from Simon's 120 pound white cardstock. And the card base is a three and a half inch by eight and a half inch slimline card. And I've masked off what will be the, the inside left side of the card because I don't want to stamp past the spine. And I'm repeating exactly what I did for the card front, except this time I'm using just brush corduroy ink. I just wanted a lighter shade of brown on the inside of the card so it's something easy to write over with a ballpoint pen. And I stamped the trees, masked them like I did on the front, and then I'm going to line up the trees a second time and stamp them again. So I got that kind of continuous row of trees again just to emulate how the front looks. And then off camera, I'd stamped uh, one of the sentiments. I stamped it crooked after doing all of this. Stamped the sentiment crooked, kicked myself a couple times, but I'm going to fix that. So off camera, I also heat embossed some of the sentiments from the set. I used white embossing powder and I heat embossed them onto dark brown cardstock and I'll show that in a minute. And while I had obviously this massive misty out, I decided to also stamp these images onto, this is a grocery bag envelope from Simon, a slimline envelope. So I lined up the trees and stamped them with that same fallen leaves VersaFine Claire ink. So it's all coordinating. And then there's my crooked little sentiment, fixed it, just adhered the heat embossed one on top of it, made sure that was straight. And then I can go on about finishing this card. So I used my craft tacky glue to adhere my watercolor piece to the front of this card base. And then I used two cent two more sentiments from the set that I had white heat embossed onto some dark chalk dark chocolate cardstock, trimmed out with my paper trimmer, popped on with some thin 3D foam squares. And then as a final bit of embellishment, I pulled out a bunch of my studio Caudia pearls. I have like moss green, ripe persimmon, lemon burst, and wineberry, and I'll have links to all of those. The colors just went perfectly with the colors I used for the trees. So I put those rather liberally amongst all of these trees on this card and adhered them into place with dabs of craft tacky glue and just picking them up with my embellishment wand. And once that was done, this card is complete. So as always, there will be a link below the video to the blog post. There will be a supply list with links to everything used with all as with all of the stamp timber exclusive limited edition sets this is the stamp set from memory box is only while supplies last so check it out asap if you are interested thank you all so much for watching thumbs upping commenting subscribing it's very much appreciated and i hope to see you all very soon in another video bye